It's finally come to this. It had to happen. The final boss battle. Pick versus fingers. Metal Base Monday. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. This will be a fun topic if this is your first time visiting. And always appreciate it will be your like and subscribe. I know it's always asked for, but there's a reason. It's so that people can actually see the videos. Definitely always appreciate com uh, comments and conversation down below. So leave something behind, good, bad, or indifferent. I know I've addressed this topic before, but I thought it was time to finally hold its head underwater until the bubbles stop to the be-all, end-all, absolute 100% definitive statement on this, break the entire subject down a piece at a time, and we are going to do a direct A-B, one after another comparison, so that there will be no doubt. It's not forum people arguing, it's not a bunch of bullcrap of one video versus another video, same player, same bass, same sound. We're going to do it. So, the main reason I decided to do this is because I still get those comments of you have to use a pick to get this sound. You have to use a pick to get that sound. All these type of things, especially with things, uh, more aggressive players like, uh, you know, you to get D.D. Verney's sound or guys who play like him, you have to play with a pick. Yeah, about that. So, right. In any case, let's talk about why this myth has come up and what's behind it. First, I want to say, though, I don't care if you play with fingers or a pick. There's no more or less valid. Honestly, you can play your bass with your butthole, for all I care, as long as you get out the right musical s statement with the right musical sound. It's a personal choice. It what feels good to you what you're most comfortable with, and what gets your personal statement across. But saying that you can only get these aggressive tones with a pick against fingers is just garbage. It's not true, and we're going to do this. But let's find out why I think most people think they're getting a scientific comparison between the two, or why they think their opinion is actually based in any reality, and let's rip that apart. So, why do people think you can't do this? Really, I think it's simple. People don't change the environment when they change the tool. What do you mean by that, Rob? Well, for every style of technique and every style of playing, you set your bass up differently. A slap player isn't going to set up their bass the same way someone who plays a lot of tap is. A slap player is probably going to want a little bit higher action to get more recoil, more bounce off the frets. A tap player is going to want the strings closer to the frets for easier tapping, especially on weaker fingers, or, you know, because they're having to press individually with all eight fingers most of the time, they need less resistance and they want faster attack. So with a pick player, a lot of times they're going to have higher action than aggressive finger style players are. Because really what this comes down to is... To get an aggressive sound, you want a hard, reflective surface hitting against the string. That's what's creating that aggressive attack. With a pick, it's the pick hitting against the string that gets that. So you don't have to lower your action that much, and you don't have to set up your bass any differently. But what happens most of the time is these guys who have their bass set up that way then go to play with their fingers, and their action is way off the board, and they're not getting any kind of reflex and it sounds duller to them. And it does sound duller. But that's the thing. They haven't set up for it. When you lower your action and you play finger style, you get the same effect, but it's from the fret hitting the string. It's almost like slap bass is where when you thumb and you hit, the string bounces off the fret and you get that really big chiming bell tone. For a pick player, that's the pick hitting the string. For an aggressive finger style player, it's because you're bouncing very quickly the string against the frets. The fret becomes the pick, in effect. You get that reflective action, and that's what gives you that same type of attack and tone. 
So it's really just kind of a half-ass bit of research to sit there and take one tool and have a, something set up to be used with that tool, then try and switch the tool and go, see, it doesn't work. Be like me using a hammer to bang a nail in and then going after it with a screwdriver and then going, see, it doesn't work. No, you have to change it into a screw and then the screwdriver is far more effective. Right tool, right job. You have to have it set up correctly. That's really what the, the whole thing comes down to. I'm utterly convinced of this. And because a lot of people are just simple and they just, they have a preference and they, you know, almost a tribal thing, almost like a politics or sports thing where they're like, well, my choice has to be validated for me. And, you know, so I'm only, I'm going to barely do what I have to, to make the point. So it's really just not a good comparison. And I think that's where most of this stuff comes from. It's really just people being lazy and wanting to support their particular weapon of choice. Again, does it make a pick invalid? Does it make fingers invalid? Does it make thumb invalid? I'm not saying don't play with a pick. I'm saying stop saying that you can't get the same attack with fingers. It's a bunch of crap, and now we're going to prove it. So what we're going to do here is a direct A-B test. I'm going to play on the same base in the same position with a base properly set up for finger style, and I'm going to play it with a pick. And then I'm going to play it with my fingers, and the answer will be cemented for all time. So to make this test as accurate as possible, what I'm going to do is put gain and drive on this so you can really hear that grind. We can, we're really going to go after that type of clanky, driven, attack-oriented type of sound that we're usually comparing these tones to. And what I have here, a nice thick pick. You can see fairly good diameter on it. It's nothing wimpy, nothing scratchy, something that's going to give it a good, good sharp hit. So first we're going to do open string. Pick. Fingers. What happened? What kind of audio trickery is this? Surely, Rodney, you've done something here. I can hear the voices of a million internet idiots having just had their argument sunk like the Titanic. I'm afraid that's, that's the case. You can get just as aggressive and the same tone. And notice too, I'm playing over the exact same position, playing with the fingers, same place I was playing with the pick. Everything is equal. Let's hear it again. A few more notes. Keeping it simple so you can really hear into the tone. Same result. Oh no, he's done it twice. Surely he can't do it three times in a row. Or even on a different string and get the same results. There's no possible way you can get this sound from fingers. I'm afraid so. We'll do it backwards. Nearly identical sounds. Funny, I actually, with a bass set up for finger style, prefer finger style, and I feel like it has more aggression to it. The sound of the metal banging against these frets gives it that extra eh that I tend to like versus but it's barely perceptible. Again, it's not a bash on a pick player. Don't care what you use, but this is it. The definitive answer. You can get just as aggressive. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. If you want to play with fingers, it's not a choice in between tone. It's a matter of player preference and what you want this to turn out like. So now how do you get your bass set for something like this 
and what are the important points to make sure that you can get that aggro sound out of your finger style. Three key components, and we're going to break down each one of them so that you can do the same thing if you want to switch or you just want that same tone with your finger style. Number one is, and I find that part of the setup that gets missed every single time, and it's because most manufacturers, when they send a, a guitar or a bass out, they want what's called a safe setup. It means something that is going to make the guitar sound good out of the box. It's not going to buzz. It's not going to show off any mild inconsistencies or weak spots. So they kind of overdo things to make sure if there are any weak spots on the fretting or anything like that, they're not going to be super obvious. And the thing is, on every bass I get, it's the nut. Usually the nut is cut too high. What the problem with that is, is that it means no matter how good you do the neck and how good you do your setup and your action and everything, having this nut pulling your strings up is one, going to make the plates that you play in the most have high action and feel worse, but it's also going to keep you from getting that real banging against the frets in the first position that you want, and that's going to be the weak spot. It's also going to mess with the rest of your action because if you have it nice and low here but high there, you're going to have dead spots all over the place. So the first thing is getting look at a number of the YouTube guides out there. I'm probably going to do one for ultra low and aggressive uh, bass things. I'm going to do a full walkthrough of me modifying one of my basses. But make sure your nut is set and grooved right and so that it's set low enough. The other thing is, and I've put this on a couple of bases, I'm actually going to do it to this. There's a company that makes retrofitted uh, zero frets. I'm a huge fan of a zero fret. It makes your open strings sound like your fretted notes, and it allows for the perfect low action here. I really recommend that stuff. I'm going to show an install of one of these uh, coming up too. So uh, if you can, I think you can get them for like 25, 30 bucks or something like that. Put a new nut on here. They're not super hard to install. I recommend it. That's going to solve a lot of problems and get you really in the ballpark for banging away. Now, the other is, for me, I follow a simple formula on how to get my bass set, and that is I get the neck dead flat. So with the truss rod, I make sure that there's no backward curvature, or like this, and no upward curve on the neck at all. I want it dead straight because I want the same measurable action all the way up and down the board. Then what I do is I take the strings and I lower them so that they're laying on the frets. So I get no sound whatsoever or just, you know, the plank plank type of thing when I'm fretting the notes. And what I do one string at a time is I come down to the bridge and I get my tool and one string at a time, I raise the action just until the point that I get the clear note and a little bit of buzz and rattle. If you want that aggressive tone, you want some of that clank in it, the higher you lift it, and the more of that grime and that grind is going to get out. You want Acoustic, it's okay to hear buzz and rattle. You, want, you don't want dead notes, notes that just sound like crap, but you want to raise it just enough that the note clearly sounds out. Get that kink on the front of it. See how there's a consistent kank, 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 kank on each note. It's not overpronounced on some frets, not underpronounced on others. So that's what I do, and I take a measurement here and here, and I make sure that they're the same level. I want it consistent all the way up the neck. So I lay them on the frets, and I adjust each one just until I get the note clear with controlled uh, pressure. Again, banging the hell out of your bass is really just going to cause problems in the, in the end. Learn some control and some discipline. Get good, consistent technique, and this is going to help out a lot, too. And I just do it all across the strings. So it's the three components. Make sure your nut's set right or get a zero nut retrofit. Dead flat neck. Lower the action down to where the note doesn't sound and slowly build each one up until it's just right. It's a really simple formula, and that's what's going to get you in that ballpark. And then you can get that 
good, aggressive, meaty type of sounds. And, you know, again, you can go brighter with this. I can, you know, add some treble into it and get even. That's going to be closer to something like a Dee Dee Verney type of sound or something like that, that, that he has. That real clangy thing. Love Dee Dee Verney, love guys like that. Still get it with your fingers. We have killed the myth. It has been busted. It is dead, done, and gone. So tell me in the comments, are you a pick or a finger style player? And is this new news to you? Have you reconsidered maybe your attack or your technique? Or did you want to play with fingers, but didn't think you could get it? And now you're reconsidering. Love to talk about the chops and the technique and all that type of stuff. Uh, and last note, the live stream from last week, YouTube managed to mutilate beyond what I consider an acceptable level of quality for you guys. So I'm going to redo that one and have that coming up. Also for patrons, I'm going to put up a post and have you guys uh, put in some new questions and things you might like to see added into it. But I'm going to cover the same topics as before, plus anything the patrons might want to see. As always, thanks so much to my patrons. I'll have that post up for you in that poll so you can get in there and vote before I do the next live stream, and we'll look at a patron-exclusive one too. Next week, we'll also be back on with uh, a new riff like we've been doing with Shred Shed. I'm going to have a new little mini bass solo to do, finger style this time, as I have with the others. Maybe we'll do one with a pick, just to be cool with the pick people. But uh, it'll definitely be a finger style one coming up next week, and that'll be fun. So lower that action, straighten that neck, and let's hit the shed for next week. So that's going to do it for this one. Thanks, as always, for joining me. Always appreciate you guys, and I will see you on the next one.